Good day, grade 11s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to lesson number 56 from the grade 11 textbook. Well, uh, as usual, we're going to start by revising our homework from the previous lesson. Well, um, the first question, calculate the price elasticity of supply. Well, like I said in the previous lesson, make sure you are careful as to what you put on top. Okay, so the formula say percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price. Okay, so here if we read, it says assume the price of coin is 20%. So the 20 goes down and the the, the the quantity supplied for corn is 40%, changed by 40%. Okay, so that will be 40 divided by 20. So as we all know, 20 goes into 40 two times. So our answer to this question then will be two. Okay, so in this case, let's see. In this case, uh, is the supply elastic or inelastic? Well, if it's two, then uh, it has to be elastic. Okay. Then the next question, so the answer here is elastic. The next question, draw, and why do we say it's elastic? Well, it's elastic because it's greater than one, okay? It will be inelastic if it was less than one. If it was one, it will be unitary elastic. Draw a correctly labeled graph. So that means we want to see our price axis. We want to see our quantity axis. We want to see the demand curve, which is uh, sloping correctly. If it has to slope downwards or upwards, whatever the case is, make sure that the slope is correct. Uh, but now we want an extreme case. So basically the answer is perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. So they say from what you got in B. So in B you got elastic. So that will be perfectly elastic. So the demand curve that you have to draw here is horizontal. I'll show you just now. Then what would likely be true of the availability of inputs for a firm with the supply curve you drew there. Well, a firm with a horizontal supply curve uh, would mean then that uh, inputs are readily available and can be shifted into or out of production at a low cost. This will be uh, something like what uh, <laughs> maize. Okay, right. So here's our answer for number one, two, here elastic. Uh, this is what I meant. And this price, sorry, this price is labeling of this axis should have been closer to the axis, but yes. Then this is the quantity. So our quantity axis is labeled. And then this is the S, which is very vital because if it's not S, then it's D. And so your answer becomes wrong. So make sure it's fully leveled. That's why we have six marks for the axis and for the demand for the supply curve. All right, so without uh, wasting any much of your time, let's jump into today's lesson. So today's lesson, we're going to just go further into what we started off in uh, lesson number 55, where we were introducing uh, price elasticity of supply. Uh, take note, it's supply, not demand here. But here you see it says supply, sorry. Okay, so uh, let's see the five uh, the five cases or five degrees of price elasticity of supply, which is the same as what we saw with price elasticity of demand. Okay, so the first case, which is an extreme case, is a perfectly elastic supply. When there's an infinite supply at a particular price and the supply becomes zero with a slight fall in price, then the supply of such a commodity is said to be perfectly in uh, perfectly elastic. Okay, uh, I almost drew it, but yes, we are going to see it just now. In case in in such a case, elasticity of supply or PES is equal to infinite, and the supply curve is a horizontal straight line which looks exactly like the demand curve in case of perfectly elastic uh, elastic demand. Okay, so it's a straight line that is parallel to the quantity axis as shown below. Okay, so it looks exactly like the demand curve. So just like I was saying there, the demand curve will not have this S. It will have, uh, so it will be something like this. It will be horizontal as well, but it will say D. So these graphs look exactly the same. The only difference is here we are saying perfectly elastic supply. So if they give you two curves, like the one on your left here 
and the one on your right here then it should be easy for you to tell which is which because the s stands for supply and the d would stand for demand so this we have done in the previous two or three lessons uh, i think it was lesson number 54 if i'm not mistaken maybe it was 53. all right so on this this as usual is a what we did this in grade 10 this is a supply schedule so it's showing us uh the price the different price levels but look quantity here is changing so uh basically we can say this is perfectly elastic moving on to or furthermore as seen in the graph above quantity supplied can be 100 it can be 200 it can be 300 it can be even more so this thing is going to stretch nothing is going to change the price is going to ch remain the same okay so uh 100 200 and or 300 units at the same price of 30 rands so we say it's perfectly elastic so it must be noted that perfectly elastic supply is an imaginary situation okay i, I also say it the same with uh perfectly elastic demand but to some extent it is possible i don't know okay comment down below and tell me what you think all right the next degree is perfectly inelastic so i started off with the two extreme cases uh perfectly elastic and perfectly inelastic as you saw in that other activity uh where it was asking um uh give us an extreme case to your previous answer and uh, the previous answer was elastic so the extreme case we can find on elastic is perfectly elastic if your answer in that case was inelastic this would be the extreme case which is perfectly inelastic supply so when the supply does not change with a change in price then supply for such a commodity is said to be perfectly inelastic because it does not respond just like demand when we say perfectly inelastic demand uh, we say it, it would be a case where a change in price does not affect quantity demanded at all okay and in that case we say ped is equal to zero now we are saying pes or es is equal to zero so everything is the same as you are going to see with the graph itself it's identical to the one for demand the only difference just like the one we just talked about here is the d and the s so this one here is vertical and uh it's obviously parallel to the price axis so here we have it and the s is the one that is going to tell us what uh it is whether it's demand or supply so the one for demand looks like this and then it's going to have a letter d just like that so any price a change in price does not affect quantities demanded in this case and here a change in price does not affect quantity supplied so price can go up supply will still this be the same price can go down supply will still be the same okay so in uh, as seen in the graph above quantity supplied remained uh same at 20 units whether the price went up from 20 to 30 or from 20 to 40 nothing changed and as uh, we said with that other one it is mostly imaginary put your comments down below and tell me what your thoughts are okay the next one here is elastic supply which in some cases we will refer to it as relatively elastic supply okay so when a percentage change in the quantity supplied is more than the percentage change in the price like we saw there with the answer we got which was three was it three no it was two i can't remember so basically uh, we need to know is it greater or less than one if it's greater than one then it's relatively elastic okay i'm not going to talk about relatively inelastic you see it just now i'm going to go through it so this is already graph number three and it looks like this Okay, so look here. Yeah, I hope I'm going to get it right. Uh, price goes up from 10 to 15. So it went up by 50%. But look here. Here it goes up by 100%. So this year represents a 50% increase. And here it represents a 100% increase. Okay, so a small change causes a bigger response. So if something responds more just from a little change in price then that thing is definitely elastic 
but we cannot say it's perfectly elastic because if it was it then would have been horizontal so this one here is not horizontal it's somewhere between uh being horizontal and being uh what do you call it being uh unitary which you will see again later uh, shortly okay so a 50 percent change causes a hundred percent change so if we calculate it will be percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in the price okay i don't want to leave out this part which says percentage so what is the percentage change in quantity supplied it's 100 and then what is the percentage change here in it's 50 then the question is how many times does 50 go into 100 it goes twice and so who's bigger than who here uh p uh p e s is equal to two so if p e s is equal to two then who's bigger than who p e s is greater than one so therefore this is elastic or relatively elastic and so we are giving you even the reasons why we say it's elastic the next uh, continuation on that as seen in the schedule the quantity supplied rises by 100 percent due to a 50 percent rise in the price in the graph above the quantity supplied rose from 100 to 200 with a rise of uh, price from 10 to 15 which is a 50 percent increase a percentage change in quantity supplied is proportionately more than percentage change in price. So elastic uh, elasticity of supply is more than one. We calculated, we saw that it's two, therefore it is elastic. The next one is uh, inelastic, which is between elastic and uh, which is between unitary and perfectly inelastic. Okay uh so okay let me show you you uh, this will be perfectly inelastic okay and then this would be by the way supply curve is upward sloping okay so unitary will be something like this uh so this one here that we are drawing will be somewhere between so anything between a, a, a vertical line and one which is uh, 50 50 diagonal uh, anything in between the space here anything that uh, slopes like this like this anything between as long as it's not vertical or unitary so any slope in between any of these so all these represent their different degrees of inelasticity in a way it's uh from 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 so anything between that between zero and one we say it's inelastic or relatively inelastic so when a percentage change in quantity supply is less than the percentage change in price then supply for such a commodity is said to be inelastic in such a case price elasticity of supply is less than one so but take note it's greater than zero because if zero is less than one negative whatever is less than one so and we don't have anything beyond that so the extreme case is zero so we go from zero and then we get to one but then we go beyond that to infinite so infinite is our perfectly elastic and uh, the other extreme is perfectly inelastic so we start from zero going up and so from zero to one we then say it's inelastic from one upwards it is uh what uh, elastic and then to infinite then that will be uh what you call it perfectly elastic all right so in such a case price elasticity of supply is less than one not more than one and the supply curve has an intersect on the quantity axis and i'm going to show you what that means just now uh, this is what it meant here on the quantity axis you see there's one that we are going to draw on the did i mention that did i go through it <laughs> i'm losing track okay but let me I, I hope i'm going to manage to calculate my numbers without a calculator here 
All right, so here there is a change. Okay, I can because it's 10 to 15. That's easy. We even did it before. So here we are having a 50% change in what? In price. But look here from 100 to 120, it's an easy one again. That will be 20% change. So what goes on top? Percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price. Okay. So our price change from what to what? Uh, 10 to 15, which represents a 50% change. And our quantity supplied change by 20%. So if we do this, it's easy. 5 into 5, 1 into 2, it goes 0 times. How about into 20? It goes 4 times. Okay. So who's bigger than 1 here? 1, we put 1 here who's bigger than who? one is greater so our pes is less than one therefore we can conclude and say this is in elastic as simple as that the next one okay so in the graph above the quantity supplied rose by 20 percent due to a 50 percent rise in price uh the quantity supply rises from uh, 100 to 120 which is yeah uh with a rise of uh, price from 10 to 15 a percentage change in quantity supplied is proportionately less in that other case it was proportionately more that okay but in this case it's proportionately less than the percentage change in price so elasticity of supply is less than one we calculated we got a 0 0.4 so basically it is what you saw the last one here is one which is in between so this is between the two extreme cases so what are our extreme cases okay i i don't have to forget our supply okay so we have an extreme case like this we have an extreme case like this okay so we have one which is going up we have one which is going there and in each case this is s this is s okay so our price our unitary will be some something in between so this is our s so our unitary will be something like this 45 degrees let me say yeah so if this one goes up by two percent this one also goes up by two percent if this goes up by this bigger margin it also goes up by a bigger margin so basically it's unitary so when percentage change in quantity supplied is equal uh, to present a change in the price then supply for such a commodity is said to be unitary elastic in such a case es or price elasticity of supply is equal to one so that's a case where if this one goes up by 50 percent the other one also goes up by 50 percent if we say 50 divided by 50 we get one so when the answer is one uh, we know that this thing is unitary elastic okay so basically here we have my numbers are easy here this one goes up by 50 percent so i was using the same thing which is easy and this one also goes up by 50 percent so if we use our formula percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price it gives us 50 divided by 50 which is equal to one so who's bigger than who here one or one come on one is equal to one so when our pes is equal to one because this here is our pes ne? if our pes is equal or price elasticity of supply if it's equal to one then we come to the conclusion that the type of elasticity cost is unitary okay so in conclusion in the graph above the quantity supplied also rises by 50% due to a 50% rise in price. And remember, look, this one rises, this one rises. It's not the case with demand. With demand price rises, what happens to demand? Decreases. So the relationship there, there that other side is inverse. Here, it's positive. The quantity supplied rose by from 10, from 100 to 150 with a rise of from 10 to 150 which is basically the same thing 
uh, so a uh, 50 50 come on this is easy you don't need so in conclusion i just like i did with demand i show you all the five extreme cases look at what the heading says degree like from the beginning we say this topic this lesson actually is degrees of price elasticity of supply so we have five degrees okay we have two extreme cases okay I shouldn't have written it like that. I should have written perfectly elastic here, then perfectly, you know, in that order. Must like perfectly elastic. From there we go to elastic, then we go to unitary, then we go to inelastic, then we conclude with perfectly inelastic. Just like we see here. Look, we have this extreme case and this extreme case. From those extreme cases, we have these. Now, who is in between unitary? Who is this side? Um, what's happening to my cursor? Okay. Who is this side? It's, um, what is this? <laughs> I'm getting confused now with uh, my, my cursor jamming. Okay. This here is inelastic. Yeah. This here is elastic. And this is perfectly elastic. So perfectly elastic goes next to this. And then unitary is right in between them. Come on, this is one of the easiest topics you ever do in economics. Well, this brings us to the end. As usual, we end our lesson with some homework. Assume the price of a commodity increased from 6 rand to 8 rand. So here it increased by 2 rand. So, but now calculate the percentage at which it went up. Its quantity supplied increased from 20 units to 25 units. So it went up by 5 units. So what is the percentage? Calculate the price elasticity of supply. What is the formula? Percentage change in quantity supplied divided by percentage change in price. The next one. Study the supply schedule below and answer the questions that follow. Okay, what's going on here? We have price, so price will be on our vertical axis, and we have quantity, it will be on our horizontal axis. So this is the price, it's 100, 100, 100. Already you can tell what's going on here. The price is remaining the same, so something is going on, but output is increasing. So prepare a supply schedule, a supply curve from the supply schedule of the of product X and determine the type of elasticity of supply demonstrated by the supply curve. This is one of the easiest. If I want to give you a clue, this is an extreme case. We only have two extreme cases where, you know, something is staying constant. So what is going on? Well, as usual, uh, subscribe to the channel, invite friends, and thank you so much.